Hello and welcome to this Rover Crit preview and special playthrough of Talislanta. It's currently right now on GameFound in its final days and they asked if I would like to try it out and play it. And I said, uh, yeah, I'll give it a go. It might not be that great judging by my other previous GM experience, but hey, isn't that the point of role playing? So in order to be able to role play this, I need to find some people that totally join, not against their own free will, and they'll be playing as my players. The first one you know and love, and our usual forever DM, is Jonathan. Welcome back. Hi, everybody. I don't know if you love me, but here oh, I am. They absolutely do. There's no question. There's a cat tail. Indeed, there is a cat there. So that they might be making <laughs> appearance throughout this playthrough. Uh, the other two people not on camera who are joining us is, first, we have the doctor, Mark. Hi, everybody. Shagog's here, <laughs> coming at you live through the power of uh fantasy lands and imagination and this is not live it'll be horribly heavily edited the other player uh. who will be joining us is the fanciest of pandas fancy panda also known as matt my brother so do i have to have the shackles on for the entire playthrough i'm not gonna run away this time i swear no matt that's part of my character design <laughs> you have to you have to have them <laughs> it won't be like last time so without further ado we have our players so let's jump right into it we will be playing in the worlds in a one shot that i hastily put together of talus landa here is some nice artwork and most of the artwork i will be using should be from their actual campaign in books. I will let you know if there are a few exceptions that I may need to pull up based on what's going on, but it will be mostly theater of the mind, not maps and stuff. So this is something probably you can put it in the background and listen, but there will be some cool images flashed up on screen, as well as maybe the horrific faces I and Jonathan will make as we continue playing. Without further ado, let's actually get to it. We are all in the main capital city. I actually really ah. like that. Yes. That's very pretty. This might actually not be the artwork of the capital city from them, but I'm using it for the capital city. This is the city of Chimeril. After there was a big uprising, a huge war that broke up into nine kingdoms. This is the main capital where it's, I guess you could say it's the safest. It's the main trade hub. And you are all there as you have been summoned by a very rich noble. But as you walk in, why don't we start off, I think, judging by the party dynamics, Jonathan, who are you? What is your character? And uh, what are they up to? Well, I I am very happy to be here in this <laughs> trading hub. My name is Humbleberry Pie. There we go. Look at that. Beautiful. I, I love that name. I am a Mogroth Amber Trader. And I love trading Amber from my home area of Mog. <laughs> and I am a little bit slow, but I'm very agile and I'm large. And then eventually you'll start working at the DMV here, right? Yeah. That's, <laughs> yep. Oh, damn them for taking my <laughs> shtick that I wanted to use for this game. I know we were working on this for like decades. <laughs> yep. <laughs> They really pulled it out from under me. Matt, introduce your character who likes to journey along from what I'm told with. Yes. I'm, so, yeah, my, my character's name's Unyas Crystal Shaper. Um, after doing my, my stint of military training, as is required by my clan, I decided to set off as an adventurer. So I left the mines and... Uh, this dude was just kind of walking by, and it was, it, you know, a bit of a slog getting up out of the mind. So I was like, he's probably, he seems like a big lumbering guy. He's not going to notice. I just kind of hopped on his back and took a nap. Uh, and it took him about three days to notice me as I just kind of rode with him. And so I figured we've, uh, we've gotten to know each other. At least I've gotten to know him. He really has not gotten to know me, but I'll consider us getting to know each other. And, uh, just kind of joined him on his uh, adventuring and trading ways. Excellent. And of course, our final party member, maybe the most interesting of them all, which is impressive considering we have a sloth in the group. Mark, who are you and what are your talents? It hurts to speak, but I will try. <laughs> Frostbane's the name. Abducted from the village of Vardun for stealing food from my youngins. 
I was forced into slavery and work for the Hierophant of Amman. I only live to serve her, and her will, against my better judgment, has brought me with these two characters here. I'm willing to do anything that my lord and god commands. <laughs> it's the scariest one of us yes, all. Yes, indeed. I, I cannot wait to see the player interactions and this slowly uh, devolve into a arguments from Frostpunk. Mm. Anyway, the three of you have been summoned by a noble that, uh, Jonathan, you are well acquainted with. You're, you do lots of amber trading with this noble. And sure. you assume that's why you have been uh, summoned. And here, behold... Whoa. Is our noble sitting in the chair? Fix really that posture, dude. Yeah, I was going to say, fix <laughs> that posture, dude. <laughs> he stands up, you know, arms are wide as he sees you, as he calls out, Adventurers, thank you for hearing my call. How was your journey to my fine palace? Worse now that I hear you. <laughs> oh, it's only going to get worse, my friend. I don't know which of us is the spokesperson of this group, because it's probably not Frostbane. But it takes me 20 minutes to say anything, so <laughs> I think it's by default. Is He's just standing there waiting for you to respond. I think he knows <laughs> it at this point. <laughs> no, you, I said that out loud. Last... Oh, yeah, yeah. Me, me sitting here with my minus one intelligence. <laughs> No, that was that was said out loud. He knows you as well. He knows your attitude. So he, he's going to let it pass for now. We are Rocket and Groot, as you said earlier. <laughs> That's pretty much what this is. And I guess I guess Drax. I don't know. what. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Humbleberry will will greet will pleasantly greet his old friend, the noble. Did you say his name? <laughs> I did not, but uh, okay. you, like I said, That's you fine. know him, and you know him as Goldbeard. Oh, that's nice. I love Goldbeard. It's a family name. It's one of those names that they got known for long ago, but it sort of got lost in the family line. But, you know. It, it, it got lost in the uh, beard yeah. trimmings. Yes. Everybody named Baker isn't a baker. Yes, yes. So, well, Goldbeard, what what do you call us for? Do you have an interest in my mungberries? Usually, I would love to add some mungberries to my special wine, but please follow me, follow me, as he directs you to run off to a little side room, as he's, you can see he's very excited. As we were walking off, I'm just slowly put away the mungberries that I was definitely not munching on. <laughs> you see a jolt of pain writhe through my body <laughs> as I spur into motion and muster the courage to say, Amon demands haste don't waste her time <laughs> you picked the wrong guy to partner with <laughs> amon is aware her will is divine and all-knowing i am no one to question yeah and dumb by the sounds of it uh i cast um <laughs> shackles oh of faith on uh unyas we're getting started early here. Oh, oh God. <laughs> this, I mean, this is also what I expected to happen as well. You can't uh, slight my God. <laughs> All right. What does that spell do? I get to summon magical shackles that will put them in the flayed position. <laughs> With one shackle I'm specifically putting over, like, around okay, their hold. mouth. <laughs> what? It doesn't make sense, I know, but it's like around their whole head and it's covering their mouth. Oh, it's magic. You're not Meanwhile, on Jonathan's my back just now, been slowly right? walking towards the yeah. this whole time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the whole time, yeah. Th this is all happening in the background. I'm still just <laughs> ambling over. <laughs> this is how we're going to make up for Jonathan being slow. He, the time <laughs> it takes for him to go somewhere where he's going to be made up with Mark and I bickering. Oh, yeah. <laughs> This is going to be. Sense. Yeah, probably. It probably just happens. 11 plus um, 5, so 16. You make your point mm. <laughs> against your yeah. gnome compatriot. I'm not yeah. sure what the exact word would be right Rush here. Hill. I guess exactly gnome kin. No, 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 literally chilling because my shackles. Yeah, no, I, I am gnome kin. Yeah, I was going to say, as the shackles no, descend really out of nowhere. No, it was part. That yeah. there, there's the quotation marks around. Yeah. Well, as the shackles emerge from the complete nothingness of the void, their 
freezing, almost like negative degrees. They wrap around his hands, binding them and putting him in a T position. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> as I'm a final sorry, shackle. This is a Kelvin only stream, so we don't have oh. negative. Okay, so zero. <laughs> <laughs> wrapping around these shackles are absolute zero yes but i cast a protective spell around you to not hurt you no i'm kidding i'm kidding i'm kidding but yeah no it goes around his mouth and you just hear with one final twist of absolute agony frost coming out of my helmet thou shalt not blaspheme <laughs> and i let go all right. just, From the side room, you do hear, hurry, hurry, there's so much to show. I just grumpily scamper off. Well, then, what is it? <laughs> In the room, as you finally enter. <laughs> I don't know what's going on back there. This I have is, no idea. Yeah, this is a windowless room. Like, the main room was, like, where the big windows were, like, you'd present, even though it's a bit messy. This is, like, a small side room with dusty bookshelves all along the sides. And a big table in the center where there is a map scrawled out. It looks very old. And you can see him like he's holding it open and he looks very excited. What do you have there? I attained this map in a in a bet with, you know, old McFirmish from the palace down the road. Uh, E-I-E-I-O. <laughs> he did have a farm, I believe. <laughs> What did he have on that farm? This one oh. is his number. He his family has never run a farm. Oh. No one that rich ever got started uh, off as a farmer. Uh, these aren't the. I mean, his last name's Goldbeard. Does that sound like a farmer to you? <laughs> no, no, yeah, no. I was the thinking of the McFirmishes of Taz. Oh, right. So the map is a very old map of Tesland, like before all the kingdoms. This looks very old. You don't even recognize some of the names. Honestly, you don't even recognize the writing, probably. You can do an intelligence check if you want, but what you see, Goldbeard points to what, judging from what you know of the continent, looks a little bit like it's around the forest of T Tamaranth. And he's pointing there, and there's a picture of what looks like some strange building. And he goes, based on my studies, I believe this may be the actual lost original temple of Kabbalah. Rumor has it that this temple was the site of technology and magic that we even today we do not have access to. If, if we could find this place, then this may be the key to who even knows there's so many things. And at that moment, you see him, he rolls a scroll aside and then like drops three more books on the subject. Uh, some of them may or may not be fake. Who knows? And in one book, he, he wants to point out, he shoves it towards you and says, according to this, you have to find the light as it penetrates through the canopy at the perfect moment when all is still, when the amber is at its brightest. That is why I called you here. That sounds exactly like you're the one who would know when that would happen. Where, where is the light in the canopy? What canopy? Well, uh, he goes and rubbishes for the other old map again, puts a, a modern map next to it, and it looks like where I'm flashing this nice little green circle around where the temple looks like it and would where be located. Are we? You, down there. Now I know it's a distance, but fear not, for I have already arranged for you transportation. And from his pocket, he gives each of you a ticket to a airship service that he has apparently bought tickets for you before. There are airships in this universe, so letting you know about that. We have to take the airships. I don't like heights. It will be much faster. Don't worry. Nothing ever bad happens on the airships. It will be a luxury cruise for all of you. Yeah, you say that until something bad happens. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> do we have a, a regular working relationship with this guy? Has he given us missions in the past? You do, Jonathan. You have traded okay. lots of amber with. That's why he also called upon you. I'm gonna, I want to ask him if he's paying us for this. <laughs> oh, oh, you know? oh, you know I will always pay you, my friend. Oh. In fact, All right. at that moment, he rummages under the table, just quickly pops down, pops back up with 
a very large bag full of tons of different currencies, mostly gold, but there's other stuff in there too. You know, he's eccentric after all that. This is just what I'm going to start you up with. If you find the temple and are able to find some amazing discoveries in there, this will be but a penance of your reward. Right. This will suffice. <laughs> Suppose we can keep some, maybe we'll find some goodies. Mm. You know how I like goodies. But there is no delay. Hurry, hurry, you must go. I timed this out all perfectly. As my voice has also changed for the character. I'm going as fast as I can. Uh, I don't, I don't, I don't want to go in the airship. As he rushes you off, It'll he gives you directions fine. to the airship. Uh, station? Airport? <laughs> I don't think the, the book I read said what the, where they dock. The air docks. The air docks. That's what we're going with. That makes more sense. Mm, let me just make a quick roll here for as you make your way over there. Real dice? Fake dice. Uh, it is fake behind the scenes dice. Oh, oh we don't get <laughs> yeah. to see it. That's so you can lie. <laughs> yep, I can straight up lie. So you have the directions to get there. And this is a modern city. That being said, the main walkway you are going to use, it seems, unfortunately, that uh, someone has crashed their cart and they're blocking the road and there's a whole big kerfuffle. You're not going to be My able cabbages! to... Uh, well, how, how are you going to deal with this? Are you going to go through and find an alternate route? What's going on? Are they, did they, like crash or something or oh yeah it's isn't... a multi-car crash there are cabbages and oh. fruit everywhere you know everyone's looking around it's it's completely crowded you hear shouting no fires yet <laughs> nothing shalt halt my progress as i lift my great sword and cleave the cart in half uh <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh okay I, I was gonna try to try to talk to them but uh <laughs> <laughs> you can try to stop me. No, uh, no, no, no. This is great. I'm not uh, fast enough to stop it. You. Okay, okay. yeah. <laughs> I didn't think I'd I need mean, to look this up mostly because I didn't think. I mean, it I am, up, but I, I'm kind of, I'm kind of not that bothered by it. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> I'm gonna make you see if you hit it first. Okay. Roll me a d20. But do you have any advantages in general? I do. I have plus three on sword, and my strength is a plus three. All right. Uh, I'm going to give you a plus one because, I mean, this is already a cart that's crashed. So. Twelve. Oh. I almost saw that roll over to the five. I was going to, if you missed a cart with a broadsword. Yeah. <laughs> with a broadside of a sword. <laughs> roll for damage. <laughs> All right. So that is one D ten. You never know. It's a broken one. down. <laughs> never mind. Yeah, your oh. sword sort of just goes dunk into it. Like, whatever the reason, the wood, maybe because the way it's crashed, like, it just you caught just the see, blade. Well, that could still just, intimidate them, maybe. Yeah, you just see, like, uh, my character scream in agony, like, ah! Now, un unfortunately, Jonathan... <laughs> nice it, job, Ice Boy. Um, it does the opposite. Uh, the car That cart owner hears the thunk and turns around and goes, What the hell are you doing? My cart's already crashed. Why are you trying to break my cart? What are you doing here? Look, well, look, he was he was just trying to knock on it to get your attention. I mean, look, he didn't do any damage to it. You think damage? this big guy, if he wanted to, he could do damage. <laughs> He's just getting your attention. Hold on. This is this has got to be at least a hundred gold of damage now. Uh, and the, and the other car me... driver now is like, yeah, yeah, no, that that's all. <laughs> hey, hey, that damage was already there. As a as a merchant myself, who has a merchant plus one skill in with charisma power, I, I think I can charisma. clear this argument up. Yeah, maybe together uh, we so can. So, are you strictly trying to just deal with the cart driver that the sword's in, or are you dealing with everyone? Are you trying to mitigate everything? Uh, I guess mainly the one with, the, with whose cart was damaged. Just the one. Yeah. All right, uh, so that is plus one for your merchant you're going to use. And uh, how... Do I add to this in any way? No. Yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, and your charisma's what? My charisma is... Uh, what is my charisma? Why am I... Oh, one. I thought you said plus one, yeah. Well, no, you, you add the skill oh. and your charisma. So plus two. All right, I'm going to give you... 
While this guy's trying to take advantage, he's still flustered about everything. And of course, didn't expect someone to swing a sword into his cart. <laughs> so I'm going to give you another plus one as, uh, you know, you're also very good at, you know, you're slow, you're calm, you're going with the flow. So I think mm -hmm. you're going to have a, he's a bit more flustered. So I think you're going to have a better time at this. So uh, a plus three total. So that's still not a great roll. <laughs> Got a nine. The guy's like, all right, all right, listen, you pay me 50 gold. And you help move my cart to the side until a repair group comes on. We'll call it even. No, we'll, we'll, we'll help you move the cart. We ain't paying you anything. You crashed your own damn cart. You damaged my cart. <laughs> that damage was already there. We all know it. In that moment, I hold up my left hand, which bears the Hierophant seal. <laughs> and point to it and say, Doth thou know my god? We're going to find out. <laughs> What's the Hierophant seal? Is that like the seal of your god or something? Yeah, so I'm branded. Oh, okay. So like okay. all of her servants are branded that way. The guy does have no idea what that symbol is. But <laughs> the person he initially hit does. Oh, huh. And do, do we know what their reaction to it is? I'm about to say so. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and while the first driver, you know, is like, I don't care, you know, before he can finish his sentence, the other guy grabs him like, moving the car will be great. That's all we need. Thank you so much. And just like, don't, don't, don't. There we go. Just... See, didn't uh, I do a good job of negotiation, guys? Blessed be <laughs> a mod. Really. So, uh, but you still guys can move this car mess. now, guys. All right, wait. Uh, can I can I roll for? Um... Uh, we we can't just get around it. It's no, literally carts, blocking us. Yeah, the two we, carts we agreed just are to... like tangled together. This is, you know, this would be all world's worst crashes or whatever with <laughs> carts, <Wait. laughs> wagons. Uh, can I can I? Uh, the horses ran roll, off. By the way, I, I think gone. I should be. I should be rolling accuracy, seeing as Mark's way up in the air and I'm three foot one to high five him. <laughs> He's got his higher fan hand up. I'm gonna try to high five it. Go ahead. <laughs> I'm going to say it's um, neutral for this case. So I just roll 1d20? Roll d20. <laughs> what? Oh, I was hoping for this. All right. Oh, no. So, Matt, you go to high five the hand showing the symbol, and a certain goddess does not take kindly to this. It's like blasphemy. <laughs> oh, it is blasphemy, all right. Let me take a look. What fun can I have with you? You know what? Uh, Once again, things it. I wasn't going to you look love up to now. See it. What do I what can I do with curses? Why are you tempting fate like this? <laughs> Why not? Because it's fun. Faith. Wow, Fett. <laughs> it's, it's in character. The god has decided since you're trying to be mischievous and, uh, you know, high five, when obviously mm -hmm. that was not meant to be a high five, that you have been red. You see red text in line and just wrap around your arm really fast and flash. And as of right now, you don't feel anything different. Besides just, you know, an ominous feeling. Uh, huh. Cool looking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it's nothing. I'm sure you're fine. Uh, anyways. Uh, how about moving that cart? I mean, I'm pretty strong. Could we, the three of us, just try to I'm push gonna it? I'm going to say all three of you try, and I'm going to have all of you roll. And okay. highest roll will be, in essence, it's like super advantage. So mine oh. is uh, 12. Okay. I think we're safe with uh, Jonathan's, but uh, yeah. Matt, you, you uh, Matt? We don't know. Yeah, so like my, my strength my strength is plus two. Mm. All right. So... So Jeez, plus five. Interesting. All right. So Mark with yeah. a twelve. Six, Jonathan with an away. eighteen and Matt with a fourteen. Sixteen. No fourteen. What? You are oh. able to move the cart <laughs> out of the way. <laughs> I'm I'm for people at home who don't <laughs> realize my character is like eight feet tall. Yeah, no, so. uh if we actually just jump back I mean, really quick to the city page where I <laughs> yes, everyone's here. Great. This is this uh, is how I just hopped on his back and he didn't notice. Yeah. I, I think I'm three foot one and eighty eight pounds. I think this would uh feel free to correct me, Mark, as I'm not sure with your character, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. I feel this is probably the heights we're dealing with here. Yes, I would agree. Yeah. I might even be shorter than that, because if, 
Jonathan's like eight foot something. I'm only three foot one. Oh, I thought you were he's, four. Yeah. There, no, we no, there we go. There we go. He's down. two and a half yeah, times my height. Yeah, that's yeah. about what it that is. That little packet on the back of the uh, sloth, <laughs> that, that's a little papoose yeah. carrier from uh, Matt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I just hopped on in. Don't mess with my amber or my mung berries, okay? <laughs> where I keep my stuff. It would just ignore the, the earlier scene where I was secretly eating your mung berries. All right. Uh, so you are able to move the cart with ease. And uh, this hasn't slowed you down too much. So you're still able to make it to the airship on time without, I think, you know, sprinting, worrying if your carry-on luggage is going to be checked in right. You know, you... you I'm the carry-on luggage. <laughs> <laughs> uh, unfortunately, Matt, you're, you're a little too... Your catcher's a little too big for the little box they have outside. So... Um, of course, because I'm three foot one. You're all able to board the airship without any real issues. I wouldn't say this is going to be like gold plated luxury, like the one gold beer would actually get for himself. But you know, there are some pretty nice amenities. What are uh, each of you doing as the ship is cruising along? Standing emotionlessly. <laughs> it's, it's leaning, leaning over the side, feeling very nauseous. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm just meditating and remembering a very nice blade of grass I once saw. Actually, I say not not leaning over the side because then I'd see the way down. Like I'm I'm near the trash can. <laughs> I've, I've, where are you? I get some serious altitude sickness. Frostbane and Goodberry, where are you guys standing for your meditation and also meditation? I guess. No, just <laughs> nothingness. <laughs> <laughs> That's really good meditation. Yeah. Whatever, whatever is the most stable piece of ground I can find, I'm I'm sitting down on it. Oh, I'm dead center. I, I mean, <laughs> right like, in the are middle you outside, of the chapter. Are you yeah. indoors? Like in, oh, I'm on the deck. Like the dining room and stuff. No, I'm on the I'm in the center of the deck on top. Yeah, I'll I'll, I'll chill next to next to Frostbane. I think I'd stick. With All right, I want each of you to give me a perception roll. Whatever your adapts is, uh, for you, Mark minus five because you're just so deep into whatever. And, That's actually very fitting. I have zero perception. And uh, for you, I would like a. Minus three. I think you're daydreaming, but you're probably used to daydreaming. I'm assuming I'm not rolling at all because I'm sitting over in a trash near can. a Correct. trash can. Correct. Yeah, I'm ready to vomit. So I have a plus two, so I'd be a minus one yes. overall. Yes. It's, it's the bane of all of us. Besides oh, schedule. That's not great. <laughs> that's Mark, pretty bad. All right. More than twice your roll <laughs> with a minus five. All right, Humble Bear. Being you, literally that leaf. Dead. I'm, I'm really it's thinking about this. such a good memory. <laughs> You're just you looking back on it. Oh, so green. It was just the best. Can you describe it? Brown. Describe it for us. Oh, it was the perfect shape. You know that 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 curved, but with a point. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and next I, you're I, gonna be. Oh, go yeah. no. No, 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 go <laughs> I was gonna say. I was gonna say next. You're gonna be telling me you want to foster all things that grow. I don't. That's I don't a little J.R.R. Tolkien quote. Oh, because, okay, okay. Because you get it, because he oftentimes goes into verbose detail about <laughs> scenery and grass. I just skip those parts. And you know, as you you're picturing this leaf, and the ship is skipping over some clouds, uh, you're lucky enough that you decide to meditate next to Frostbane, as a harpoon of sorts goes flying towards your direction. He catches it. Oh. <laughs> and Damn. from the clouds, you see multiple pirate ships appear, small little airships, and they're shooting other cables at the airship. You know, I've heard of storing things in the cloud, but this is ridiculous. <laughs> so that's where all the uh, illegal movies are hidden. Yeah, yeah they're pi pirates in the cloud. <laughs> Judging by the, the way that, you know, you almost got pegged in the face with one of these anchors, they're probably not friendly. I'm doing the sound effects. Keep going. Nice, nice. And you know, there are they're jumping onto the ship. Now, this is a ship that's you aren't crewed this ship, you are passengers. So, you know, they are screaming, pirates, and you know, they are getting to arms, they're taking on the pirates. But you do notice that uh, on the enemy ship, you can only assume to be the leader, as he looks bigger, tougher. And carrying cool gear. Oh my god! Stronger too. This is actually from. Uh, is he the first Epic member of his? <laughs> this guy is actually from Everything Epic Games earlier game, the Secrets of the Lost Tomb game. He's jacked. Oh yes. Yeah. He looks like a king from Tekken, except a lion. Mm. I was thinking of Johnny from Magic. Oh, there you go. 
I was gonna say like a like a guy with a lion's head. Uh, nice. No. Well, you can see where our interests lie. <laughs> you see this guy, you know, crossed armed, looking very like proudful, and then as he points, you can't really make out what he's saying, but it's pretty obvious. He if he's not head honcho, he's in like he's a high ranking person on that ship. As three pirates swing and drop down in front of the well, the two of you, Matt, you're in the corner. That's me in the corner. I want now all of you to do a speed roll with Matt. You're going to be at a minus four. Oh, no. Eh, that's the way the cookie crumble. Because they rolled a 20, I'm going to give them their ambush bonus for the first attack. Did they straight roll the 20 or is it 20 with modifier? They rolled a straight 20 without modifiers. Pirates, they jump down. They see like everyone else is being occupied by like the people on the ship. And then they see the three of you. Now, one of you is holding a harpoon, you know, pretty scary. The other one is still sort of looking like if they were just regular animals, the na their natural prey. So uh, they're going to go after the, the big furry sloth. Oh, my <laughs> God. <laughs> Well, here's the deal, Jonathan. Yes. Did they hit another 20? Uh, one of them did. Oh, no. You know, as a DM, you're occasionally allowed to lie about rolls. Uh-oh. <laughs> That's a one-shot. We might, we can die. <laughs> I am ready to die. This campaign is ending much faster than I anticipated. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> so the first one, Jonathan, comes at you. He hits you? But here's the thing. You've got tough hide. I do. It literally just sort of bounces off. Sure. Next guy comes in. I think he was a little intimidated still because, you know, Frostbane's there and like awkwardly swings over your head and misses pretty badly. <laughs> he must be and tall. Here comes Get over 20, my dude. Next one, though, <laughs> he's got his eyes on the prize. And because of this. My mung berries? <laughs> yes. Oh, he's after those berries. And he's so he's so determined to get them and steal them. It's after all what a pirate would do. I'm gonna need you to make a constitution roll. Okay, I'll do it if you insist. My constitution is very good. I'll say that. <laughs> yeah, I think that's okay. all right. Okay, you won't die. You're gonna take damage. Wow. Okay. So here's the thing. <laughs> oh boy. He swings right, down you. with all his might. Rip. <laughs> And, you know, because he swung down with all his might, if he didn't Bye, swing as hard, it would have been just like the first guy. But he managed to just cut through and deal two damage to you. Oh, oh my <laughs> God. Man, these guys were terrible was gonna be like... on damage. <laughs> he only made it through because it doubled. Because he doubled it because the crit. Okay. Our little Barfy friend, it's up to you. Are you still feeling good enough to take part in this? I Yeah, I... I see someone going for those mung berries. Those mung berries, those are mine, damn it. Those are my <laughs> mung berries. So mine. I charge at the pirate who actually got a hit in. Uh, so yeah, you, you're able to strike him. Roll the damage die. You hit into his leather armor, but I guess just the way that you know how to like, how armor is built, you can slide your sword into like one of the cracks and are able to do a, a significant amount of damage to this guy. Straight kidney shot. Something like that, yeah. Like, it comes out, and you can tell you hit hit him pretty hard. All right. Uh, Frostbane, you've got three yeah, pirates so around you. I'm going to take out my great... You know, I'm going to use the harpoon, actually. Wait, what are the stats on a harpoon? That'd be like a club, right? Give me a minute, because that's like more of an improvised... It would be more like a halibut or spear. Yeah. Do you have a harpoon? He caught one of the, the one harpoons you I used <laughs> to tie up to cool. the ship. I would just have you treat it like a giant spear. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this spear and the one that did damage to Humble Humbleberry. I'm going to uh, just shove this straight oh, down into his head. Oof. <laughs> Let's see. So it's a good place to put it. Excuse me. Can you hold this? I'm not going to do a penalty for because you're not like you trying to use it as a spear. You're using it as improvised heavy item. Unfortunately, this one, you know, that's like I said, he was he's obviously the most skilled of the three. He'd have like maybe like a different color palette. OK, so you slam the spear down as he like cat light reflexes, dodges around it. Uh, so he is unfortunately able to uh, avoid your giant strike. Humbleberry, though, 
how are you dealing with these cats? Two of them are now distracted. Well, I have a, a great memory, and I that's why I have a thirst for vengeance. <laughs> I won't. What I really want to do is take my club and just, I want to do like a spinning push and try to like hit all three of them, but I don't think I'm allowed to do that. I'm going to allow it. It, 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 There's nothing that says there isn't. It just, I might up the challenge and stuff. And I mean, also as with any RPG, the rule of cool applies. Yeah. And I'm nothing if not cool. So. All right. Um, you know what, Mark, are you still there? I am. I'm going to need you to make a dexterity roll right now. Ooh. Okay. And you too, Matt. You may be slow, Humbleberry, <laughs> but that doesn't Great. stop momentum. As no, you start to spin, you just sort of catch each cat one by one. And of course, the other people are around you as well. Frostbane, he knows fighting styles. He knows what's going on. You sort of just bend backwards, like simply dodging it. Meanwhile, I'm still woozy. You, you dodge it technically. But what happens is the cat that was in front of you also gets slammed into you. You're going to just take one. Okay. You just get thwacked. Oops. As for the other three. Uh, Taste my club, pirate skull. The first two that you hit, which were the ones that were involved, entangled with you and Frostbane respectively, get slammed into the mass nearby. And it's obvious from the, the way they get hit, it hurt pretty bad. The one that was engaged with Matt but also seemed to um, run himself against his blade again. He's, he's like sprawled on the ground. It looks like he's trying to get up. The, the cats are getting up. The one on the ground that is getting up, he is going to try and book it back to the other ship. He is not happy to be here. He's done. He wants out. I got stabbed in my kidneys, knocked into a gremlin. I am not <laughs> happy to be here. You are a little gremlin. <laughs> What? Oh boy, he's laughing. It's never good when the DM laughs. <laughs> so as he gets up, he slips on his own blood, hits his head, and he's dead. Oh, okay, great. That's cool. Uh, the other two roar in anger, and that roar catches the attention of the captain. Oh, right, that guy. And obviously seeing one of his dead crewmates, you know, it's a whole hassle. He now has to like report it and talk about why that happened and what were the safety procedures they could have done to avoid this, so... He's annoyed he's at the paperwork OSHA. that you guys are going to have to put him through. So he he's coming over to jump and uh, join the fray. Oh, the pirate king oh, yeah, over here. Oh, yeah, he's the pirate king. The other two pirates are going to now charge. They're going to split it. So one is coming first at, at you, Frostbane. He hits you. Uh, well, how much does your armor take? Five. All right, he hits you, but it like glances off. And uh, he 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 runs into the the giant spear you put into the ground. Oh, nice! <laughs> uh, no damage, but he's wide open. Guess what, uh, Humbleberry? What is it? I'm gonna need you to make another Constitution roll. Okay, here it is. Ooh, that's not as good as it should be, considering how good my Constitution is. But uh, that is fine. No other thing besides the damage. Okay, how much damage am I taking? Oh no. <laughs> um, how much life do you have again? I have, well, I took two damage earlier, which leaves me now with 22 hit points. Okay, good. You're, he, he comes in, he goes straight through your chest. <laughs> oh, God. Right through it. Um, you <laughs> oh, are Frost taking God. 16 damage. Oh, baby. Yeah. He critted and rolled <laughs> the highest damage. <laughs> well, he's the pirate king. And that wasn't even the king. That was the other oh, dude. Oh, the, the, oh, I thought the king did that to me. No, oh, no. king's next. We're not making it off this airship. No, yeah, <laughs> this wasn't uh, where I... I told you guys not to take the airship. Uh, but we will continue after short time break. All right, we're back from a quick break. And by the way, you know that this is a real campaign as our player, unfortunately, Frostbane, uh, had to leave because, you know, you can never have a perfectly clean RPG scheduled session, which uh, is true. bad news, of course, with our friend Humbleberry. As you recall, you just took a massive hit. <laughs> yeah, I'm, uh, I'm half dead, so. <laughs> and uh, not only oh. that, the Pirate King has joined the fray. We'll be fine. And he he sees that, and you know he likes a weak target, so he I'm gonna die. <laughs> he is gonna he snarls. 
left and goes to his pirate crew like, stand aside, let me show you how to finish the job. But as he walks up towards you, you hear, you can't make it out. It's like, you can almost call it whispering, but you know, you can't make out what's being said. And it's, it's obvious you're not the only one who hears it. Like you can tell the crew are looking around. The cat, it stops the captain for a second, but of course he wants his prey. So he's keeping moving forward. And as he raises his giant pike and comes down to slam it onto you, Frostbane, conveniently, who knows why this is happening, (laughs) gets in the way. And when the pike slams into and starts cutting through Frostbane, strange dark energy just blasts out from him and rips through and ripples through the entire ship. It's pretty obvious... This has done significant damage as um, you notice your body start to tilt in a way that I think one can only describe as no longer flying. Frostbane went full frost bomb. The captain in the fright that uh, just this giant explosion, strange explosion happened in front of him, shouts out a retreat as what's left of his crew, because the other crewmen weren't doing as well against the rest of the, the ship's guard, uh, go to jump back onto their ship and start trying to cut off the ropes. Because their ship seems to be, you don't know if their ship is fine, but they're hoping that it is and they just can bounce out of there. Uh, how are you guys going to respond to this? Well, slowly. <laughs> I mean... Uh, can I- we? Can I see if there's, like, their ship is still, you know, has a lot of pirates left on it? It, I'm, it's, I'm de- it's got a good number, but they're all very, like, injured. You can't say for certain, by the way, your ship looks like a much worse damage from the explosion yeah. and the blast. Hmm. But it definitely, it's not like their ship looks pristine. I of don't course. have any any gear or skills that I think would help us survive a fall from this high in the air. I guess we can yes. try to run well, over I, to their We can ship. either... <laughs> try to attack the pirates that are cutting the ropes that at least slows our descent because we're attached to them or try to get to the pirate ship but you're in bad shape there are other people by the way on this boat i want to remind you that some are dead but there are the original crew there is some of the original crew alive you're not yeah who's the actual captain of this ship this isn't even our job (laughs) so well he's he's probably in still in the the crew quarters the 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 driving system is actually inside for this mm. one it's not like mm. outside, like the a regular steering wheel. It's a little more advanced than a pirate ship from the. I mean, 1600s it flies, so I assume they they should be expecting some incremental wet weather while driving. Right, right, right. Yeah, uh, I, I guess I'm saying to, we we yeah. abandon ship to to their ship. Okay, so then we're we're trying to in essence hijack their ship because we wanted to go probably not where they're headed. Yes. Okay. All right. I'm on board. If so, you're what's on the current board. situation of the guys who we were fighting? One is dead. Uh, yeah. The other two ha- are the rest of their crew are making their way. Some have already jumped across to the other ship and start cutting the lines. They don't care who's left on the their ship. While some of them are still trying to make their way across. Where's the captain? Your captain or the pirate king? Pirate. Oh, pirate king just like ran and jump. You know, he he wasn't even fighting before, so he you know he is just like he's got all he his jumped energy. back to the pirate ship. Oh yeah. It seems very dangerous for us to go over there with <laughs> just the two of us. <laughs> but uh, I'll follow your lead. I mean, try to think I don't know what else we can do. Well, maybe we can we I mean we can look this ship might have precautions. There might be like the equivalent of a lifeboat for the air or something like that. Like maybe an escape pod or something like that. Can I ask if that's something I know about or I could find? Uh, why don't you give me whatever your highest in either int pers- or, or persuasion or not persuasion perception? Um, they're both the same. So conveniently, <laughs> <laughs> all right, here I go. All right, I rolled a fifteen. I mean, or, I'll, yeah. I'll also do a, a look around, see if I see anything. Survey says a three. All right. <laughs> well. <laughs> At least it wasn't a crit, miss. Uh, so, uh, Unas, you are freaking out yes. because the ship's going down. 
you know, one of the strongest characters, your sort of bodyguard just exploded. In fact, you don't know where the hell that person went. There, there's not even a, a remains of them. So you're just Rip. terrified. But of course, Humbleberry, the one who is always slow, but with determination. Was, uh, right. you know, you remembered, you actually looked at the in-flight brochure, <laughs> knowing that there is a safety boat stored underneath, designed specifically for said situations. I've been on an airship or two in my time. Not Clearly not the other guy. <laughs> you're, you're, this I is not your thing. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, <laughs> let's get to it. <laughs> that's my plan as you All right. make your way there the the crew that are remaining they they do respect you know they have a job to keep the passengers that have paid them you know try to keep them alive and help them so they do help you you know they help pick you up and carry you to said lifeboat wow. there are conveniently enough people alive or I would help, but I'm a third your size. So you're not gonna. We're not gonna play the Titanic game of who gets to live on the boat. Oh, thank God. Thank, uh, thank Frostbane's God. <laughs> <laughs> As you all descend in the new boat, the boat is. It's not like its own little flying ship. It's designed to safely land. So we're basically in a glider. Yes, it is more of a glider, but you are able to safely get out of the way. And landish. So while the crew is getting things situated, there was a doctor who was part of the people who survived. They look at your wounds, Humbleberry, and he says, I, I can I can patch you up, but there's a good chance these will open again, depending on what you do and how you move too fast. Oh, so don't worry <laughs> about that. <laughs> I'm so, going to take it easy. With the magical powers akin to only what I can imagine as the doctors from John Wick, uh, you are going to heal 18 points of life. Wow. <laughs> However, I would like you to roll two d20s now, Humbleberry. That's almost my max. Okay. Actually, that might be my max. Here I go. Rolling can I, two can d20s. I'm going to ask the doctor if you can heal my one point little like bruise I have from a dude falling on me. No, he's got nothing that's <laughs> worth that. Everything is like either sewing and stuff. He doesn't know how he can help with that. This is my doctor. Get your own. <laughs> and he's too busy with, all right, for now on, I'm just going to let you know this now. If an enemy rolls a five or 18 against you, they are going to hit automatically as if it's a crit. Okay. <laughs> that's fun. <laughs> Triple crit. That's a lot of fun. He brought you back to life, but those wounds could open at any moment, and a good hit could be the could be the difference here. Got it. I mean, fair enough. That's eighteen points of healing just immediately. That's, yeah, that's... A, a a you know a spear through the chest. <laughs> no, this was a scimitar. That's interesting. So at least one of them is higher that would hit me probably anyway, but a five now is that pretty bad. So that's interesting. Okay. Mm -hmm. While the doctor is taking care of Humbleberry, what are you doing? So um, I kind of like take note of you know our area, what's going on. So I have a scouting skill. Um, so can I like look around and just kind of like scout out the area, see what I see, and kind of figure out where we are? Absolutely. Well, give me a roll with your persuasion and scout bonus. Not persuasion. Perception. Why do I keep calling persuasion? persuasion? I knew you meant 14. All right. So you are able to ascertain that you you remember, even though you're not the one with long memory, uh, where <laughs> the marked off temple is, is not terribly far off from where you guys actually were. Like conveniently, you were going to stop at the city near there and then make your way towards the forest. But this is technically closer. You You also notice leading the way that you think that there would be towards a temple. Uh, you notice like broken branches and probably indents within the ground walking in that direction. Mm, so it looks like, you know, people have gone that way. Yes. All right. Uh, it is late at this point, though. 
I'm a me. I got night vision. Do you guys want to try to make your way to the temple? Or are you gonna stay in a night? Because the crew, the crew are making camp. I think it's with uh, Humbleberry here. I'd imagine it's best to make camp. <laughs> Oh, I thought you were going to suggest we should leave now because it'll take me all night to get there. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose we we could take a night to reflect on the sacrifice of our dear friend, Frostbane. Were we friends with him? <laughs> That's still up in the air. Yeah. But he was... he, I mean, you know. I'm barely friends with you, I think. You're just <laughs> a hitchhiker. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's, I, I believe he's more of the business partner. He's also a trader. You just, you, you diversified with him. But Humbleberry is, is a very, uh, is a peace loving fellow and, and respects the, that, that Frostbane gave his life for me. Will either of you stand guard during the night? Yeah, uh, I, I have got night vision and a guard skill. I, I think... I think that's him. Yeah. <laughs> the crew takes some shifts, but for, for yours, can you roll me a perception with adding your guard and perception bonus? Oh, 20. man. Wow. Okay. That's pretty good. It's about as good as you can get. Yeah, but what but what could come from this is the question. All right. All right. No, <laughs> I uh, that actually, that works really well. During the night, you hear something in the forest. And of course, you go to check it out because you remember you saw those footprints from before. And you see a group of warriors, possibly mercenaries, look a bit like this, trugging around some equipment, which, huh. as you know, definitely is probably gear designed for going underground. Torches, ropes, you know, you, you know that you could you recognize Plunky the gear. gear. Yes, splunking gear, but with other like lanterns and stuff. So, you know, they're not simply just it, they have to be going somewhere where they're forced to be where it's forced to be dark. These people, they're complaining. They're they're they don't see you. They, okay. They're they they're saying like, oh, I can't. How could they run out of torture oil so fast? This is so crazy. This is such annoying. But but soon we will resurrect the the, the chosen one. Yes, yes, that will that will work nicely. But they move on their way. Do you go to interrupt them, or are you going to stay in guard of the camp? They do seem to be heading, like I said, towards where the temple is supposedly marked. How many of them are there? Three. What? Three. Uh, and they're like drag. You said they're like dragging equipment behind them. Uh, they're carrying some. Yeah, they're not dragging it because this is a dense forest. A cart probably wouldn't work that well there. Uh, okay, because I was considering if I could snatch something without them noticing. That I will allow. You could do like a stealth roll and see if you can sure. like a uh, pickpocket. You are able to sneak up and uh, you actually grab from their bags. You're going to actually grab the rope, pretty much denying them any uh, way to climb down, <laughs> supposedly, whatever it is. And that's good for us. Now we've got rope. And now you have rope. There are no further interesting developments for the rest of the night. They pack up and they say they're going to head towards the town that they're supposed to go to because they could probably make it there in a day's trek. Uh, what are you guys off to? Well, sounds like Unia. Well, I can point out to so, so Humbleberry. Mm -hmm. uh, hey, so while you were being all patched up, mm -hmm. I found what looks like might be the mm -hmm. path down towards where, you know, our temple is. Well, and I saw some mercenaries heading that way with climbing gear and it sounded like, you know, it, it sounded like there might we might have some uh, company there, but it definitely seems like this is the right path. Mm. Unias, perhaps you're not as troublesome as I thought. <laughs> See, I, I made up for the mung berries that I stole. I mean, definitely did not steal. From you, I, I you did definitely... notice a few missing mung berries. No, oh, hey, well. forget about the mung berries. I also stole some rope and uh climbing gear from them. I'm not gonna forget about anything, <laughs> I will remember. <laughs> Humbleberry will remember that, <laughs> <laughs> but I will 
I do think, you know, I'm rested. I'm ready. Let's follow this path. Let's let's make our way. And by the way, I've got good plant lore knowledge. So if that helps in any way with the tracking, then we can put that to use too. Uh, maybe, maybe see if on our way you find any other mm. edible berries that might be. Yeah, you know that what? could be good. Give me a, I, I mm. guess, what what's the plant that's lore's a, attribute? Plus, plus one. No, but like. Uh, oh. It... oh, that's a uh, per, per, perception, perception. Perception. Uh, while you're walking, why don't you give me a perception roll using that to see if you identify any interesting plants along the way. Did I find anything? Not really for this area, unfortunately. The the path you're walking along is mostly general vegetation. I mean, things of interest, but nothing that you think that would be worthwhile to stop and collect currently. Could you just give me regular perception? What oh, the sorry. hell? I accidentally oh rolled a D120. Your eyes just open up. Your third eye has opened. You see the multiverse <laughs> as you know it. You see every single character Jonathan Estes has made in other RPGs. You just, it is just terrifying. You see our old D&D &D campaign. You see, Your you mind see Jonathan crashed. as the DM. Just <laughs> so what you find is a strange little, like, rat, like a mount, big boulder rock protruding from like the ground. And it's a little odd where it's located. And Humbleberry, you'd probably just be like, huh, that's an odd thing. I'll maybe note it, but keep going. Unyas, you you decide to climb it because it's odd. And it's 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 got a cave mouth opening. Like just a hole straight down? Hole straight down. So I'm going to call over uh, Humbleberry. Hey, hey, look what I found. Uh, mm. Oh, is this where we're supposed to go, you think? <laughs> you see signs that definitely some people have gone down this. It mm. looks like there was a climbing gear set up there, but it broke. Mm. Which may explain why someone need to go and bring new climbing gear. All right, I say I say we head down, Humble. I think I yeah, think we got the right spot based off the the mercenaries I saw before because I saw them you know complaining, oh, we need new climbing gear, and uh, this looks like why they needed it. Well, we're we're both. Uh, I think we're both pretty good climbers, so we should be able to handle this no problem. Do you also I mean, have some I've... kind of climbing bonus? I don't have a climbing bonus, but you know, I'm a sloth person. <laughs> so I mean, I... I have. All right. Uh, I will usually, if you're trying to do something unskilled, you take a mm. penalty, Jonathan. But because mm. you are a sloth who can climb, and I'd argue your earth lore isn't enough for you to give you a bonus, but it's enough for you to not take a penalty. Like you have a general idea of like. This is a harder rock that should hold my weight. <laughs> Do I get to add my dex still? Yes, I'll let you just... It's just a normal dex roll. Okay. Hey, how about that for so, a normal dex roll? <laughs> you swan dive. You fucking... <laughs> like a beautiful thing. Then you grab the rope. It's the most graceful thing that somehow a sloth has ever done. All right, so here's the deal. You go down first. And just through your natural climbing ability and everything, you can just set up a beautiful pathway which is what Humbleberry is so easily able to just glide down. It's it's so natural that both of you, <laughs> when you may hit the bottom, dead silent. You wow. don't make a noise. Wow. You're in the cave. It's what a team we make. You see lights off in the distance. Like this is not a deep path that leads onto something. Metal Gear music starts playing in the back of my head. <laughs> You haven't been we spotted yet. Any, there's no one else in this immediate area. Nope. All right. So, can I kind of look around just to, I guess, perception assess the, you know, situation? It's a good idea. No. Yeah. Go ahead. Especially with my night vision, I assume I can see pretty well down here. Yeah. Oh. Uh, and there's. Well, I see jack <laughs> shit. <laughs> you see the light. That's what you see, and you just run straight towards it. I'm like, oh, I'm going to go grab that torch. That'll help us out. Uh, uh, do you follow suit? <laughs> I, I guess I'm – I mean, I, I got to keep an eye on him. He's, he's my partner right now, so I'm going to I'm gonna follow behind him at a distance. Before you, an oh ancient cathedral stands. Oh. 
It's quite menacing. Oh God. Is this like Wiley's castle or something? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, it is. As you guys, you know, run and see this temple, at the, the base of it, you notice there are two characters. The one in, in the hood with the cane, he's tapping his foot, saying, where were my men? They should have been here hours ago. And That's the one with that. the axe, he's like looking at him, but then he turns and notices this gnomish character that had just run into the opening. <laughs> And says, Ooh. we have company. Hi, friends. Um, so your buddies, they're on their way. Um, one of them hurt his ankle. We ran into them. And so we offered to bring the climbing gear ahead of them. Um, you know, it helped speed things up because they were really worried. They're behind schedule and such. Um, so we, we, you know, climbing gear is all set up and ready to go. Set up beautifully. If you guys want to go check it out. I'm going to need a charismatic roll there. <laughs> That's not going to work. Um, <laughs> minus five. A four. Oh. You know what? <laughs> I yeah. mean, gosh <laughs> darn it, you tried your best. <laughs> <laughs> if that worked, it would have been hilarious. <laughs> They're just like, oh, oh, okay, then I'll go check it out. The guy points to you and says, get the interloper. At the very least, we will have sacrifices for when they return. So uh, let's have each of you roll your speed now. I'm so slow. <laughs> uh, I got a nat 20. Hey, that's pretty good. You may have alerted them by just running in, but you still, you're, you're still quick on your feet. So took them by surprise. Yes, they're still a a, a bit caught off guard. I'll tell Literally. you your bonus after you decide. After you tell me what your intent, what you're planning to do. Um, is are they kind of standing side by side? Yes, one they are side the by side. They are near each other. Uh, I'm gonna go after Kane, dude. Last Call me a sacrifice when I set up your climbing gear for you. <laughs> That's just rude. Should be paying you. You charge in before they have a chance to really react. And you just slice into the guy, like, right across his chest. And, you know, he's like, what the hell? This isn't supposed to happen. You're not supposed to charge in that fast. <laughs> <laughs> you got to give me a turn. This is bull. <laughs> Screw you. You called me a sacrifice. You don't get a turn. Uh, well, actually, he might not get a, a, a good turn, but the executioner right next to him will. And so our executioner friend... I'm sure you're going to be shocked by what he's going to do. He's going to raise the axe above his head and swing down. So he is. Makes sense. If you got an axe, you're going to swing it. I'm going to argue that, you know, maybe he doesn't swing it. Maybe he's just like, oh, he thinks my attack was so cool that he just decides to let me go. All right. Roll for charisma against the DM. The DM. Minus 20. <laughs> Oh, no, I'm for that's my natural charisma stat, so you actually have a good chance. He swings at you. By the way, are either of them bigger than seven feet? Why, yes, the executioner uh, is. He's a I don't know, because I get a plus two combat bonus first. Easy. Oh. That is very good to know. He's still going to hit you, but in because he happened to roll very well, but uh, that could have made the difference. He swings down at you, and he is able to take a massive chunk out of you. You're going to take seven damage. So our priest here, he he's uh, he's not happy with you making that yep. nice, big, deep wound in his chest. Yeah, well, I'm not happy with him. So, so what he's going to do, you know some wishing very dark words, very, very evil words. And as he does so, you notice the wound on his chest slightly start to close up. And in the same place in your body, you you start feeling pain. And uh, you're going to take three points of damage. Ow. But Humble Bear, you have caught up. <laughs> oh, yeah. I finally made it. I'm here, guys. What's What did I miss? <laughs> your friend entangled. Who be wanting here? And you're like, I'm gonna get you. <laughs> I got distracted by some nice leaves. <laughs> but I'm here now, and I'm still, and I don't like what I'm seeing. And I have a club, so I'm going to proceed to hit someone with it. Become Humbleberry, the humbler, and take them down. 
That's right. Yeah, I'm going to humble them. Uh, who, are, who are you going to humble? <laughs> Sit down and be humble. Um, well, uh, let's. I'll, I'll go after the the priest. Feels like the the guy, the guy who's in charge here. I mean, he's already taken some damage, so. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. So try and swing. Off. All right. I'm swinging. Swing away. He's a he's a skinny fella. All right. So I. That's a 25. Don't yeah, roll, roll your damage, my friend. You hit him, like, in the arm. Like, it's a, some, it's a sideways glance, but you know it's still going to hurt like hell when a, a, a what, seven-foot giant sloth swings a tree log at you? Yeah. I thought he was eight feet. I, Sorry, I'm eight, eight foot. Eight. And, you know, the priest is looking like, seriously, you too? <laughs> do, do I just have a sign on me or something? <laughs> he does. Stealth roll to put a kick me sign on his back. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not the best time for that. Now, an axe has just hit you. Unyas, so, what are you um, gonna do? So we're gonna we're gonna swing at uh Mr. Executioner, dude. So seven. All right. So you all right. Um ro- roll for damage. Look at him. He's he's stocky, this guy. Like he's like a <laughs> he's built in a specific Six. way. You don't get a really solid hit on him. It's just like you just do like a little bit, like a little little stab. So not as much damage as you were hoping for. Mm. But you know, you cut him. And he sort of just looks at the wound, looks at you, and just goes, boring. And turns to our sloth friend. You know, <laughs> someone who's actually bigger than him. Mm. You like to challenge this guy. Yeah, someone his own he, size. He, here's what happens. Unfortunately, this man is an executioner, not a lumberjack. So when he goes to swing at you, your club just blocks it away with ease. Our next necromancer is he's still gonna try and uh focus on the the little guy. He goes to try it again and he goes, ha, towards you. And you sort of just stare at him. But <laughs> last time when you saw the chest wound start to heal a little bit, nothing happens there. You don't feel anything, and you're sort of just both staring at each other for a solid good like three or four seconds before you realize. Nothing's gonna happen. And he sort of just looks down. Like, um, dude, I get it. Performance issues, you know, it happens. It's okay. Well, uh, Humbleberry. Hello. It is back to you, my friend. Well, I mean, I think I'm. Uh, well, hmm. I guess this uh, executioner did did come after me. And that does make me a little irritable. <laughs> but I think I think I, I, I know I know that my my small friend uh, is it likes to take down big guys and I feel like I can I like him big. <laughs> I feel like I can <laughs> let him handle the big guy and I'll I'll keep chipping away at this other guy who seems like I'm feeling like maybe he's not going to last much longer if I keep smacking him with my club. It just yeah. feels like the, the way to go to to keep going after. You know, he seems like the leader, so I feel like it's good to get rid of him. Leader of the bunch. You know him well. <laughs> I know him well. So shall I roll? Uh, when you when you swing at him, you, you go for the same arm again. But this time, there is a a satisfying crunch oh. to go along with your hit. <laughs> he immediately crumbles in pain, holding his arm. That was my staff arm. Oh, oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you give up? I, do I, I, what, you want to make a deal here? <laughs> he, oh. he just looks at you and snarls. So the executioner went to attack Humbleberry. Can I get him from behind? Oh, you can attack him from behind. Cool. So I'm going to go for that. So you you get on his back. And if this, if you, if you caught him a little bit more off guard, I think because he heard his friend scream, he was already turning. You probably would have been able to just start stabbing in the back a whole bunch. But unfortunately, 
you get only like one or two in really before he just throws you off. The executioner moves to get in between you, Humbleberry, and the necromancer. And he is going to take another swing at you. Makes sense. When it comes to this guy's axe, it's very obvious that this axe was specifically designed to sever the neck vertebrae beautifully. <laughs> and not designed to take on wood. It, it cannot <laughs> bypass your club. I know. I picked out the best wood. <laughs> you, you are a connoisseur of wood. This is good stuff. You know, he, he's the really mad round, about people it. like that's that's some pleasing of wood that's going on. Now okay. for our very angry boy. You see him like raise his hands in the air and then slam into the ground. And when he does that, the strange dark mist, but I say it looks like mist, but you know how mist usually just tries to spread everywhere? Mm -hmm. like, like smoke, you know, it dissipates into the air. Yes. This follows a very straight line, like making almost like a box around him. No, let me change that. That's not how it works. Shoot. You see the mist, but it makes a line between him and you guys, separating you from like him. Wall. Yes. So th that that's all he does. He's, he's obviously trying to um, give himself some breathing room. But Humbleberry, you are a force to be reckoned with. So can I penetrate the mist? You can try. <laughs> Would I try to, like, do I have to hit it? to Like, is it solid? You it know what looks I mean? like a solid wall, yes, sort of. It's just like a cool-looking, weird, special effecty wall. Okay, it's a... It's a Darth Maul mist wall. Yeah. Um, huh. I mean, I feel if it's magic, I mean, I guess I could. I, I don't know that we have much choice besides to just try to smack it. <laughs> That's about all I can do. My character is not very, uh, you know, he likes to learn and study. But when it comes to combat, he, he's the guy with a club who hits things. <laughs> hey, that club's been serving you damn well. It's true. I, I guess I'll just try to. I almost want to like slam against it just with my shoulder, but it's, I'm pretty sure it's better to use my club. So I'll do that. Oh man, my damage rolls are miserable today. <laughs> All right. You, you slam your club into the wall, confirming not only is it solid, but you see a crack break through the wall, like starting the wall. So it can be broken. Okay. At least I've gotten us information. <laughs> Well, Unias, why don't you uh, um, take I'm, this thing down? Um, so, so you're going to go see. for the Executioner then? He's not behind the thing, is he? No, no, no. He, The the priest purposely separated left you with uh, the person who he was hoping people would deal with. How wide is it? Could I try to run around it to attack him? No, they were sort of like on a bridge entryway and he, he sealed it off so you'd have to like you run around and do a weird jump i don't even know what you mean by run around and do a weird jump it's but. sort of like i'm trying to picture like um because as you came towards them it was mm -hmm. like uh you know like there's a moat or something and there's a bridge leading up to them that led to like yeah uh, so he dropped the wall right at the like end of the bridge. the bridge yeah i screw it we're gonna try to get around to his get around his wall he's going for it uh we're gonna make this because it's not actually it's a leap, but architectural-wise, it's not that terrible. So we'll just make it a roll a plus one total. Oh! All righty then. All right, you tuck and roll as you jump across, land over, and the Necromancer's just looking at you like, I can't catch a break here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm assuming I don't get to also attack. Uh, not in this situation. There is a way that you can do like a full movement charge thing, but I feel like that would require yeah, 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 you to yeah, be yeah, the focus yeah. on that. The okay. executioner nice. now only has one target. <laughs> hey. Who's been parrying him beautifully. Yeah, so he, he <laughs> yeah, now, now he's going to go from like, I want to say an uppercut with the axe. So like from a, swinging from underneath. And this time, Bring it on. he does connect. What took and you so long? He delivers a, a gash right oh. across like oh. your the side of your leg up the side of your torso it's not like deep enough to actually like rip you up but you're gonna take uh. about four damage hey i'm down 10 life <laughs> you've taken 18 before <laughs> return the favor yeah i'm as now that uh 
Unyas is on the other side. I'm all wanna, my attention. By the way, let you know, Jonathan. Yeah. He's rolled four and six before. Like right around that five. <laughs> he oh is boy. he is dancing around your wound. <laughs> oh boy. Oh boy. Jonathan, <laughs> I, I need some help here. I can't hit him with the minus one, are you sure? Uh, like I mean sh- um, you you two are just kind of like parrying blows off of each other. <laughs> um, this when is you an swing, epic duel here. When you swing, you hit the railing instead like he side, sidesteps you. And that breaks and a little rock comes flying and hits you straight in the head and you take a damage. Oh, oh wait a All minute. Right, turn. I forgot the necromancer. He was just so shocked. Uh, oh, right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so uh, yeah, sure. Well, we're in two separate areas. We don't really affect each other anymore. He, he, he uh, Let's see what... He's looking at you. He puts an an hand out towards you, uh, Unyas. And once again, this time you feel pain in your arm. Like from like you don't see any cuts, but definitely like almost like the bone is being messed with inside. And you take Mm -hmm. another three damage. While his arm seems to like like looks like it's reverting itself a little bit. All right. This guy's weird. So I'm going to go obviously in on attacking him. Uh, roll your your bonus. Twenty three. Roll damage. Why can't I roll like that? I wish you did. <laughs> Six. All right. So you just go straight in, and you just thrust your sword. Actually, you know what? You tell me how how what you do. No, I'm I'm gonna go for the clean decapitation. I'm gonna run up and just in one fell swoop. Slice his head clean off. All right. By doing so in such a quick, decisive manner, that mist wall shatters completely. And you see the 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 executor just look in shock at what you have done. He is going to go run and charge you for, for slaying his boss. Hey, executioner, Maybe I hope more. you have a better head on your shoulders. All right, you know, for that, he's actually going to add plus five to his roll. You kind of stole his gimmick, you know. Uh, the executioner swings at you, and you dodge so easily, but he wasn't really thinking, so he swung with all his might, slammed straight into the ground. And when he goes to try to pull his axe out, it's not coming out. It seems he may have gotten it stuck into the rock ground. Humble smash! Yeah, I'm ready to take this guy on again. Oh! 17, baby. Roll that damage. Wait, what's, it, what's the damage? It's gonna, do, it's gonna do it. I feel it. I'm feeling it. Ah! Oh, man. <laughs> he was so focused on getting that axe out of the ground worked. <laughs> that you just <laughs> smash him in the back. Like, he's gonna need a chiropractor after this one. And you just so see him, like, arch terribly from the pain just because you don't have a cutting weapon you know you you, you don't get the the visual appearance of like the, the blood splatter everywhere but you do know that you've done some serious damage feels good even though i am a peaceful uh person <laughs> You're peaceful until someone bothers your tempo yeah yeah yeah, yeah. that's right so so we we, right. we got um what, my go what, Yep. But we, we won. I, are they still? Oh, he's oh, still he, alive? No, he's still alive. He's oh, standing. I, oh, I thought I got him. <laughs> but Sorry. no, you hurt. You dealt major damage. Okay. Oh, yeah. yeah, no, I, I figured he was still standing. It's still okay because it wasn't like, and he drops him. All right. Oh. Um. Yeah, going in with, with my sword. Only an eight. I'm sorry. Mm. Apparently, like the way he arched his back and in pain somehow also made him like really dexterous, like his dexterity. <laughs> so he dodged your knife like totally. He, by he just happened to reel back <laughs> right as I swung. And yes. <laughs> but with that, he's able to pull his axe out of the ground, like using the momentum from Humbleberry. And he oh, is just, he is done. And he is <laughs> pulling all the strength that he has. And he is going to make a huge arching swing at both of you. Oh, okay. So what do you need to know from each of us? Uh, nothing. Because because of Humbleberry's damage, 
he should have known not to exert himself after oh, taking no. a hit like that. And as he swings, he doesn't have a good grip on his axe. It leaves his hand and goes flying into the abyss. Oh. Oh, good. Oh, good. I was worried <laughs> for a second there. He missed hard. So he just... Whoosh, yep. Just... <laughs> That's exactly what happened. And he just looks at his hands and looks at Humbleberry in terror, for he knows the darkness that is about to come. Oh, man. All right. Yeah, let's whack him in the face. Well, I didn't hit that time. <laughs> you, you, you just find it way too funny that he threw his axe that you can't even concentrate. You're, you're just, you, you have that scene, you know, in uh, Zootopia. You're just slowly like, you spend your entire turn just doing the. Like All right. smiling in slow motion. My time to shine. There's a 13 hit. A 13 does hit. Please roll damage. That's your time to shine. All right. Five. All right. You you go running in, and this time, when you stab him, it's not like that. Oh, it's it's a little wound. You gave him like uh, some slight damage. No, this is this is bad. This is pretty bad for him. You've a big gush of blood just spilled onto the floor. Oh boy. He's standing. And in fact, he looks towards you. And we're going to do every role player's favorite mechanic now. Grappling? Oh, you know it. He's Rapple. grappling. I'm, I am a third his size. <laughs> well, when I say grapple, I would say more of a, a, a body slam. He completely misses you and just runs straight into the railing. <laughs> At least there's a railing. It's a safe bridge. It was a bit of a gamble. He was honestly, he was he was hoping to take you down with him. Yeah, yeah. Not so boring anymore. Now, am I, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm just I'm just determined now. I, I've regained my composure. I am no longer laughing. I am ready just to hit this very large man with no weapons. But God, he's just still such an intimidating. But not to me. I'm I'm a. I'm, I'm I'm bigger than this guy. I'm just furrier. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lisa All put right. Jonathan's eight foot something. You said this guy is over seven. All right. A 12 is a hit, isn't it? Here we go. Five. Daddy. As he hits the railing, like he grabs onto the railing, he turns around. You're just there with the club, and you swing. And when you make connection with his head... You go with enough force that the body has to follow through and you just like home run hit him off the, the over the railings and into the, the, the pit. Here All comes right. Humble off the turnbuckle. <laughs> it's Ness style. Super smash. <laughs> you know, once this battle is complete, uh, can you both give me a, per, a perception roll? I'm just glad I managed not to take any wounds to my grievous injuries I'm, i swear yeah. he like danced around it was amazing <laughs> and yes, nah, you're, you're, you're so excited just because that was such a cool finisher you know <laughs> see the guy sent flying off i'm like jeering at him down the hall be like have a nice you you fall. you go to run towards the, the ledge for that but humbleberry says hold on and points to the to the necromancer's body and from there the blood from the body isn't pooling. It's actually spreading out in weird, intricate lines heading towards the door. As it reaches the door, you hear the door begin to shake and rumble. The whole castle begins to shake. And I'm gonna need each of you now to make a will, a willpower check. Make okay. a me check. <laughs> make it a you check. That's just a straight D20 for me. Uh, same. As this a strange light emanates from the door, Humbleberry, you're just amazed by it. it is just enthralling. Mark and you slowly begin to walk towards the door. But luckily, <laughs> your friend notices that there's no way that you should be moving the that speed while walking. It's making you walk <laughs> way too fast. Can I can I jump on top of him and try to ratatouille him away? Uh, you don't even need to roll anything. That's exactly what you do. 
You mean Rakakuni? <laughs> and then by doing so, there's another flash. And next thing you know, you both wake up outside the cave entrance. But you can still feel the earth rumbling and shaking a bit, but the cave is closed. Every It seems like there was like an earthquake almost, and you're just there at the, the tail end of it. And and as you, you dust yourself off, you both realize that next to you is some strange contraption. You have no idea what it is, what it does. But you're like, well, uh, this is something. We can bring this back to uh, Goldbeard. He'll he'll enjoy this. Hey, hey, humble. You're the one with the memory. Uh, yeah. Were we supposed what were we what were we actually getting here again? <laughs> we were meant to discover some wondrous unknown technology, so I guess presumably that could be it. Yeah, we'll just tell him it is. <laughs> he he'll know, I think. He's probably the expert. As but either you... way. <laughs> Yeah. As you take the artifact and make your way back to the city that the original crew were so you can return this to, to Goldbeard, in the sky, overhead, you know, if you were to look, you notice there's a strange green light making its way across the sky. And that is where the story is going to end. Wow. Mysterious, enigmatic, suspenseful, mm, troubling. But that is our our example one shot of Talislantia and, of course, me trying to get back into DMing again and really missing role playing, but remembering why it's so difficult. <laughs> Though I have to say, just having everything be like, just compared to this table. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah. Yeah, that was fun. Yeah, yeah. Very interesting. Uh, there's some interesting stuff here. I want to know what this contraption looks like. Do we know? <laughs> Do you know? No, I, I made that up on the spot, my friend. That was that was a this needs to be a, a, a one session. So I wanted to keep it, you know, enough to leave that intrigue and fun. But unfortunately, uh, the pirate ship took maybe a bit longer than I expected. I probably should have thrown the pirates happened. at you. I should have just thrown you straight into the temple. <laughs> uh, no, but, it and it's got a fun. like the one thing also is you know, like the like special abilities. Which, like the the plus the my thing the plus two combat versus large like that one was like just just kind of very simply put out it's plus two combat the other ones like I don't know if they're supposed to be kind of like some DM discretion things to be like oh you know like the natural climbing ability like the DM just kind of up to their discretion what it adds or like I have like extreme durability to be i guess like it doesn't say anything but i don't know you could just narratively be like if i was going to be killed you know maybe a bonus to like a saving throw or something. i am sure there will be more and i pulled all of this by the way this is simply from the player guide in case you anyone yeah. wanted to know and that they're obviously this is also a rough draft version that i use so the final one will actually mm. you know be much cleaner and then if you have the gm guy we'll okay. probably actually have so maybe some better adventures than what i came up with but yeah. if you want to know this is definitely the last days for the project so we'll have a link down below you can go check it out matt jonathan thank you so much for both of you joining me mark as well but he had to leave early now matt and mark i know really you don't do much online but jonathan you still do where can people find you if they want to oh, see man. more of humbleberry if you'd like to follow the adventures of humbleberry <laughs> or me uh you can find me on twitter at quince or uh find all my other projects at jonathanestis.com like the podcast that I currently run uh, with our friend, friend of the show, Ivan Hahn, called Geeks on Trial, where we settled geeky disputes every week. If you like podcasts and geeky stuff, it's on YouTube as well. You can find all that stuff. Just search for it. You'll love it. Oh, yeah. I recommend the, They cover a whole variety of video games. I think you just did a D&D &D one, or was that a little earlier? We did a whole D&D &D one. There's uh, there's some board game stuff. So we, we, we cover everything your little hearts could desire on there. Go check it out. It is a podcast, but also on YouTube as well. So wherever you prefer your media. And, of course, anything Roll for Crit, just search Roll for Crit. We'll be there. And let us know what you thought of this playthrough. Like I said, this was through a prototype and stuff. But if you guys like more of this or like something like more something like this, I would be more than happy as we could definitely get some more role playing back into our group. I think it's been uh, too long. Yeah. I'd be down for more of this. I, I like my, my gnome kin, Unyas. 
But for now, I'm Will. This has been Roll for Crit. Thank you so much for watching, and see you next time. Yeah.